Hello and welcome to Flying Bobbins. I'm Liz and today I'm going to show you how to make the Carolyn pyjamas by Closet Core Patterns. It's a beautiful sunny February morning, spring is on the way and this is going to be my sew along for March. If you haven't done so already, you can take a look on my website www.flyingbobbins.com and find out about the kits and the patterns to go with this sew along. You can also find out about the High Five Club, which is five pounds a month, and you'll get a new video sew along every single month so that you can really grow your sewing skills throughout the year and make lots of exciting things too. Now these are my Carolyn pajamas. I made these back in the autumn. I've worn them loads. They feel very, very luxurious and very stylish too. So they've been worn and washed and I can genuinely say they're a great fit and um, real pleasure to make and lovely to wear as well. So the pair that I'm going to be making today is actually going to be for my mum, don't tell. Um, <laughs> and it's going to be a Mother's Day present for her. Um, so I'm going to talk you through each and every step including cutting out, making, doing all the finishings um, as I sew my Carolyn pyjamas for my mum. Let's take a look at the pyjamas to begin with. So if you are a, um, a beginner, a complete beginner, this probably isn't the project for you because there are a few technical details that you have to accomplish and perhaps you might want to start with a simpler project first to get yourself into the groove of sewing and dressmaking before progressing onto the Carolyn pyjamas. I think they um, describe this as difficulty rating three out of five, so I would say intermediate to confident intermediate. Now you've got a sh two, two pieces to the pattern here. You've got your shirt, and this can be done with a long sleeve or a short sleeve. You can add a cuff or you can have it without a cuff. You can add a piping detail as well for a bit of extra feature there to really elevate this make. You've got a collar which is interfaced with a revere. That's this part here is called the revere. And again, this features the piped detail. You've got five buttons down the center front. So if you haven't done so already, this is gonna be your opportunity to learn all about making buttonholes. You've got a patch pocket there with a little piped detail. So that's the shirt. There's no bust dart. It's a relaxed, easy fit. Um, there's no pleat or vent at the back. It's just fairly straightforward apart from the collar and the buttons in the pocket. It's a fairly straightforward block. Now moving down to the trousers, I'm just gonna swizz the camera down a bit so you can see the trousers. The trousers have a deep elasticated waistband and they have a, a pocket there, an Italian style pocket. So that just means that you've got that little triangle there with the pocket set into the side seam. You've then got a fly detail, which is quite difficult to see there, but you've got a top stitched false fly detail at the center front. So it's not a functional fly, it's just for, just for a feature, just to make these look like a more designed um, pant. And then at the bottom, you've got again, your cuff uh, with your piping detail as well. The fit on these again is a straight wide leg, fairly relaxed, nice deep waistband, sits just below the slimmest part of your waist um, and is very comfortable to wear. We'll have a quick look at the pattern envelope and your styling options. You can make a full length trouser or a short, and you can make a long sleeve top or a short sleeve top. So it's a very versatile pattern. You can make some winter pajamas and some summer pajamas. You could use a variety of different fabrics. So you could make yourself a very cozy brushed flannel um, or you know double brushed cotton flannel pair that are really gonna be cozy and warm for the winter and very kind of cozy casual look. You can make a nice kind of a silky viscose pair for a bit of a touch of luxury. You could make these in a crisp cotton lawn, which would be light and breathable and perfect for the summer. And you could make in a pretty little cotton print 
in the short sleeve version as a summer holiday pyjama. So it can take you through everything from cosy to luxury to summery. It's a really great pattern. You can also, of course, use the pattern pieces separately. So maybe you just fancy making yourself a great pair of pyjama pants that you'll wear a t-shirt with. Of course, you can just do half of the pattern. And again, if you're a beginner and you just want to try something, um, the trousers are the easier part of the make. So you could just make the trousers and then save the shirt top half for when you're a little bit more confident with your dressmaking. Now, again, talking about making it easier for yourself, the elements here that slightly elevate this to a confident intermediate project, I would say are the piping and the cuffs. And you have an option to not do that. So if you want to make this as simple as possible for yourself, then you can do view A, which has got a patch pocket without the piping detail, and it has a plain turn up on the sleeve and the trouser, which makes that nice and simple for you. If you're really an ambitious sewer and you just want to push yourself, you want to learn loads of new skills, you want to make something that has that real wow factor, then go for the cuffs and the piping and um, you know, you'll find yourself enjoying the challenge of learning those new skills. Size-wise, you have here the paper pattern which goes from a size zero up to a size 20. And that is a 31 inch bust up to a 46 inch bust or a 24 inch waist up to a 39 inch waist. And of course, like most people, if you are a different size on your top half from your bottom half, you can mix and match those pattern piece sizes. So if, you've, if you're fuller on top, you can make a size 16 top and then make a slimmer size 14 trouser or vice versa, so that you can make your perfect fit of pajamas. And that's the beauty of this. Obviously you couldn't do that if you were buying your pajamas from a shop, you'd have to go for the one size. But this way you can really tailor these to fit your body. Now if you are more than a size 20, the good news is that Closet Core, if you go to their website, they have a downloadable PDF pattern which goes up to a size 32. And if I remember rightly, I think that's a 59 inch full bust and a 53 inch waist. I'm doing that from memory. If you go to their website, um, you will see that they've got the Carolyn pajamas, which you can download as a PDF going right up to a size 32. So there's a really good um, wide size range available in this pattern as well. So let's take a look at my supplies here. I've got my pattern. I've got my uh, Marley Care cotton lawn from Lady McElroy. And this is an ultra fine, lightweight cotton lawn. I've washed and pressed that so I'm ready to cut out. The first thing that you want to do before you start cutting is to pre-wash your fabric to avoid the possibility of shrinkage after your pyjamas are made. I am gonna do the piping because I want to show you that technique and also it looks very pretty. So I've got a shell pink piping there that I think picks up on the pink elements of this beautiful print. This print is called Prosecco Fizz by the way, which always makes me smile. <laughs> So I've got some lovely pink piping there, which I also washed at the same time as I was washing my cotton lawn. I've got some hemline sports elastic. Um, I'm not going to be doing any sports in my pyjamas, but the reason I chose this is because it's 38 millimetres wide. So it's a really nice, deep, wide elastic and it's super soft and flexible, which is great for sleeping in. I've got some lovely little navy blue buttons there, five of them. Um, there you go. Uh, my matching thread and then you're also going to need some interfacing this is a lovely soft lightweight interfacing that I will use around the collar and revere now I'm going to be sewing this on my sewing machine because of the lightweight nature of the fabric I am going to do um, French seams and that's another technique that I can show you as well um, a French seam is really great for um, pajamas or for lightweight um, items um, you just basically encase your raw edges in the seam itself which I'm going to show you how to do if you are using a heavier fabric then I wouldn't advise a French seam you could probably um, go for an overlocked or a zigzag finish if you don't have an overlocker 
Um, so, you know, this French seam is not a difficult technique, it just takes a little bit more time. And I'm going to talk you through those different finishing uh, techniques. Um, now let's have a look at needles next. So I've got Sharps needles here. These are good because this is a fine fabric um, and it's quite lightweight. So I'm probably going to use a size 70 Sharps needle for this project here. And they're good for sewing silk. And although this isn't silk, it has got that sort of silk-like feel. If I didn't have the Sharps, I would be perfectly happy to use a universal size 70. As always, um, I will keep my scraps after I've cut out my project and I will test my stitches on a scrap first just to check that everything's stitching beautifully. Now, styling wise, I know that my mum would rather a short sleeve. So I'm gonna go for the short sleeve blouse and the full leg trouser. And I want to show you all of the techniques. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I am gonna add the, um, the cuff to the short sleeve shirt so that I can show you how to do the cuff. And the technique for the cuff on the shirt and the trouser is exactly the same. And I'm not going to do the cuff detail on the trouser. And the only reason why is because I'm, these are a surprise and I want to be able to fit them on her and get them the perfect length. And that's a bit trickier to do with the cuff on there. So I'm going to do full length trouser without the cuff and the short sleeve um, shirt with the cuff. And I'm going to do the piping on the front, the pocket and the sleeve. So between everything, you will get to see all of the uh, different techniques there. So let's open up this pattern. You've got your instruction booklet there. And then you've got your um, tissue paper with all your pattern pieces on. So you'll find that you've got one, two, three pieces of tissue in your envelope. Each of these pieces are lettered. So for example, A is the, um, the pyjama top, the front panel of the pyjama top. You will also find this is a multi-size pattern. So you've got all the sizes here, going from a zero up to 20. And these are, just identified with the different style of printed line. Now I'm gonna make a size 16 top and a size 18 trouser. Um, so I just need to um, find my size 16 line, which is a dash and a dot, and follow that and cut around that for all the top pieces, and then find my 18 line and cut around those for the trouser pieces. If you're in between sizes with pyjamas, I always think why not go up rather than down because you want them to be roomy and comfortable. You don't want them to be tight or restrictive anywhere. Now, if you're making these for yourself, then you need to measure your bust, waist and hip and then choose uh, which size you're going to be. If you're larger on top, smaller on the bottom or vice versa, you can mix your sizes up. Um, don't worry if this doesn't come up as your usual size, go by the measurements because different pattern companies will vary on their sizes. So just go by the measurements. If you are um, making this as a gift and you don't have the person to measure, then my advice is what I like to do is I go on either the Marks and Spencers or the next size guide and I look up what do they say and if I know the size clothes that the person I'm making for always buys, then I'll just look at what that would be on the pattern. Um, another trick is to take a pair of trousers or a top, fold it in half, place it on the pattern pieces, and you'll think, well, these trousers are very comfortable and they look to be about that size. And um, don't forget as well that this pattern will always look bigger because it's got seam allowance included. Um, but sometimes just folding a garment in half that you already have and popping it on top of the pattern, that's another way to make sure that you're happy with your size. But like I say, with this design, go up if you're in between sizes. I'm going to start by cutting out my paper pattern pieces. Now, um, I don't need every single piece because some of them relate to the long sleeve version, some of them relate to the shorts, and I'm going to make the trousers and the short sleeve top. So I'm only going, I'm just going to look at the descriptions 
and then everything else I'll just keep in my envelope so that I've got um, you know the, the p other pieces to use for a later date. If you want to make more than one pair and you're going to make different sizes you could always trace these pattern pieces off. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and cut this um, out of the paper right away. Now something else I just wanted to show you, I've got my front pattern piece here and I've cut round the 16 line. When I come to do the side seam here, I've got all these gradations going from a zero up to a 20. And my mum is a 16 bust and waist, but she's an 18 hip. And as you can see, the top here does come down to sit over the hip. And I don't want it to be tight around that area and I don't want the buttons to sort of be pulling or gaping. So what you can do is if you are two sizes, you just simply draw a line going from the smaller size to the larger size. So that's just grading it out so you've got a 16 from the bust through to the waist and then from the waist through to the hem, so the hip is about here, you've got that gradation that comes out. And whatever, whatever I do on the front, I'll always do on the back as well, so I'll just make that slight pattern alteration. And I've just drawn a very crude straight line there, but you could curve that slightly so that you haven't got an extreme angle there. And then whatever line you've done on the front of the pattern, just make sure that you do the same on the back. The other thing that I like to do is just to make a quick note on my patterns once I've cut them out. So I just write on here, size 16 to 18 at hem. So then next time I come to use this pattern, I've just got a note of uh, which size I've cut. Another little note about cutting out. So I've got my collar here and on that side seam of my top, it was extremely obvious which line I was supposed to be cutting. When you come to something like this, it becomes a little bit more complicated. So I know that I'm cutting a size um, 16 collar. So I can easily see the line here. It's this dash dot dash dot. And I want to cut around here. These points merge and it's at this point that then the sizes the lines curve in like this. So in fact, you then have the 20 here, which you can see the 20 is the solid line, so it's very easy to identify. And then it's going 18, 16, 14, 12, 10, etc., etc., down to a size zero here. So the reason, just for this bit, if you think this is where your neck is, the larger size is the innermost line, and the smaller size um, is the outermost line. So it's kind of swapped round and it's the opposite of say for example with a side seam. So just because you're making the say for example you're making the 20, just because you're making the 20 it wouldn't follow that you'd always be on the outermost line thinking to yourself well it's always going to be the biggest pattern piece. Because in some areas it will be the outermost line but in some areas it will be the innermost line because it will be that you need to have the biggest hole here for your neck to sit through. So the biggest size will be on the inside, for example. So if you're finding it tricky to follow the lines, my tip is just to find that solid line, which is easy to identify, which is a size 20, and then count back to the size that you're cutting. And if the lines are all merged together, just find a nice smooth average. But the more accurate you can be in getting this right with cutting out, the more happily your pattern pieces will all fit together when you come to sew them. One more tip whilst cutting out. When you come to cut out the trousers or the shorts, you will have two lines for the hem. If you're making the trousers with a cuff, you're gonna cut along the shorter one. If you're making the trousers without a cuff, you're going to cut the longer one. All my pattern pieces are now cut out at last. They do take a little while. So I just wanted to talk you through them. 
These are the pattern pieces needed for the trousers. I've got the uh, back leg there. That looks like a pretty recognisable trouser piece. The front leg looks slightly unusual because you've got this piece here and that's for that fly front detail. So that's the front leg there. You've then got this, which is your uh, pattern piece for your pocket. And that will sit up there like that. Worth noting that this pocket piece here is for view A and B, which are the trousers. If you're making the shorts, you have a slightly different piece. So do pay attention to which pieces you're cutting out. Make sure that if you're cutting out the shorts, you've cut out uh, the pa pattern piece for the pocket that is for the shorts, or if you're making the trousers, you've cut out the pattern piece that is for the trousers. And the same goes actually for the cuff panels as well. So just do make sure that you've cut out the correct ones. And then lastly, I've got my waistband piece up there. And again, this is specific for the trousers. There's a different waistband, slightly different waistband for the shorts. And here are all of the pattern pieces for the top half. So I've got my back, which is cut on the fold there. I've got my front with the curved lapel shape and then my front facing that matches that. I've got my pocket, I'm gonna do a two piece pocket with a band detail, so that's going to sit there. If you're doing a simpler pocket, you will just have one pattern piece there. Then I've got my collar, so I've got my upper and lower um, collar pieces, my top collar and my under collar. I've got my sleeve, I'm making a short sleeve, yours might be longer. And then I've got my sleeve cuff, and again, do make sure that you cut the correct sleeve cuff pattern piece because that would be different if you're doing a long sleeve. The last piece is number number letter K and this is a handy little um, pattern piece. It's your button guide. You don't need to cut anything out of this. This is a very useful um, piece that you will use right at the end of the project to successfully plot your buttonhole positions. So keep that one, it's useful for the end of the project, but you're not gonna cut any fabric out of that. Now one last thing before we move on to cutting out the fabric, let's just move that out of the way. You'll notice both on your trouser and your blouse pattern pieces that you have these dotted horizontal lines and they say lengthen or shorten here. If you're tall or petite and you wish to lengthen or shorten the pattern, this is where you do it. So you can, to lengthen the pattern, you slash through this line, you split the two pattern pieces and you then stick another piece of paper in between the two, making sure that you keep those beautifully parallel. So that lengthens your pattern piece and you would do exactly the same on the back and the front. To shorten your pattern piece, you can simply fold along that dotted line and draw that up, making sure that everything remains beautifully parallel. To shorten your piece, this you just blend and you do exactly the same on the back as you do on the front. And by lengthening or shortening at these areas, you maintain the overall shape of the hem and the general design of the garment. If you simply lengthen it, lengthen it by adding on extra at the at the hem, you know you're not going to help yourself that much because your waist position will still be the same, etc. Um, it's just that you'll have a longer top, but it might not fit you very nicely. So they put these dotted lines here for a reason, so that this is the position where you lengthen or shorten the pattern piece. And the same goes for the trouser: lengthen or shorten at those horizontal lines. Um, and you will maintain the leg shape at the hem, which will help you to put your cuff on afterwards.